thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for sharing that minute or so of being still together. And uh, <clears throat> I want to uh, very much limit any any anything I have to say here, and 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 and. Uh, provide as much time as possible for Orina. Uh, but I, I do want to once again thank you for being here t today, which is, um, um, as Woody Allen said, showing up is most of it. Uh, so uh, us showing up in support of the work that Arena is doing is wonderful, and I, we, we really appreciate that. And um, uh, perhaps some of you, uh, uh, this is the first time you've joined on this topic, uh, or maybe everyone was here. A about a month ago, we had um, we had a meeting with Arena and uh, and Andre, and um, and first heard about the work that her group is doing, which I won't get into. I'll, I'll let her talk about this. Um, I think it was about a month ago, four or five weeks, something like that, and we had over a hundred people, and the outpouring of support has been extraordinary and I know she will speak to this but uh, for for any of you who have been who joined last month and uh, any of you know all of us who who uh, lent our support material or emotional or spiritual or just in paying attention and bearing witness to what's going on uh, from the Zen peacemakers organization I heartily thank you all um, uh, sincerely. So with that, I'm going to mute myself. Orina, I will uh, <clears throat> pass uh, pass the talking stick and let uh, my friend Orina uh, Krajewska uh, talk about the work that she's she and her group are doing in Poland and in Ukraine. So Orina, there you go. Thank you, my dear. There okay. Uh, yeah, here I am. Uh, Hello, everyone. Uh, it's very, very touching to see you again, um, really. And also, I have to uh, maybe start with, uh, with saying that uh, here, Krzysiek is with me, Asha will join me from our foundation, and also Andrzej may be joining, because I generally feel that everything that happens, happens because of the community and because we are doing it together. And that really supporting supporting amazing energy and and Zen peacemaker community was really fe felt from the from the very very first day uh, after our Zoom meeting last month. Um, really deep deep thank you for all that you did and are doing. And I would like to today maybe briefly tell you what has happened last month because it feels like a year, update to you on, on current situation, both in Ukraine and in Poland and tell you also about our plans. Um, thank you, really thank you. Um, because thanks to your help, we can really extend our actions and reach places that are in high need. For example, part of our last medical transport was sent to Mariupol, a city that you may be uh, heard of, the city in biggest humanitarian crisis. I will show you some pictures at the end uh, from our deliveries. I will be also uh, leading today's session with Asha, and Asha will be joining us in a second, I think, because um, what we would like to do, we would like to sum up uh, some of uh, some of donations and also uh, thank you and tell you what we have bought since then and sent to Ukraine. But uh, Asha is in Belgium, so uh, I'm sure that she will be joining in a second and maybe I will just tell you and sum up what, what has happened uh, to maybe some of you who haven't been with us months ago. Uh, very brief sum up, sum up of what we do and update on current needs of list and plans for future. So uh, just to tell you, our foundation, Fundacja Małgosi Braunek Bądź, uh, maybe some of you might also remember Małgosia, my mom, um, 
the foundation of Małgosia Braunek B is, uh, to be honest, now very active on many planes. Uh, we're working really, really intensively. But for years, we have been involved in, um, in promoting holistic approach to health and uh, integrative medicine, both in chronic diseases and, um, and, and prevention. We focus on health education and also we bring psychological help to all those in health crisis. But outside of our regular activities, from the very, very first days of war, we have been continuously helping people fleeing the war and finding help in Poland and refugee in Poland, as well as organizing relief transports to hospitals in Ukraine. So just to tell you how it started, it started uh, pretty much with us receiving a phone call from Juliana, a volunteer of the Armed Forces and Territorial Defense of Ukraine, whom we have direct contact since then. And Juliana was assigned to find an NGO in Poland that could help deliver the most needed supplies, materials, and medicine to hospital in Czerniowce, that is southern Ukraine. And two days later, we were contacted by another volunteer, Zhenia, who we also are in, still in contact with. And he works on behalf of Kiev uh, Hospital, Veterans Base Home Hospital, and also other places, uh, very, very dangerous places like Kharkov or Zhytomyr or now Mariupol. At this point, we are focusing uh, on sending humanitarian aid to these two hospitals mainly, Czerniowce and Kiev, and other hospitals in, in greatest uh, crisis. We operate uh, on the basis of updated list of needs from these hospitals. I will show you these, uh, these lists. Uh, they are sent directly to our foundation and also official requests dedicated to also our foundation by the commander of Czerniowce, or from, from the city of Czerniowce. Uh, but also in the in last two weeks, made, we made contact and established uh, contact with um, organization on the Ukrainian side uh, that is called I am the future of Ukraine, which is responsible for the distribution of equipment to places that need it most. And, uh, the mission of this foundation is to support the most vulnerable children in Ukraine. So orphans, children with physical and development, de developmental disabilities and diseases requiring help and treatments and children uh, living in poverty. Um, so far we have sent eight direct shipments of the most needed drugs and medical equipment. Last transport was sent uh, on Wednesday, um, 13th of April. And at the moment we are sending one shipment per week. Uh, I think it goes now very smoothly and automatically thanks to many, many people who help us on the way. Um, each time after the transport is handed over, we receive a confirmation of received goods and things. And that really gives us a guarantee that meds and medical equipment, they go just directly to those in need. Uh, I would like to tell you very briefly uh, who are people um, who work with us or who we are. So we kind of work as a aid committee here established by our foundation. Also Sanga Kanzeon, Polish Ukrainian Bliskis Collective, um, and we work at the Museum of Modern Arts in Warsaw. There are also friends who are coordinators, drivers, translators, paramedics, uh, lawyers, um, and volunteers, really. Volunteers on Polish and Ukrainian side. And what I would say, we're all aligned in this belief that the humanitarian crisis in Ukraine needs to provoke an immediate help and immediate action, and we continue to do it. So 
what we do, we constantly work on still getting and buying medicine and equipment, medical equipment. Uh, then usually on Tuesday, we are sorting, packing, describing everything, uh, what is being sent according always to the updated list of needs. And then we're organizing safe transport across the border, uh, which is not easy because it takes a few steps on the way. So usually for now, uh, I will show you also pictures later, but we send it from Warsaw to another city in Poland where it is repacked. Then it is sent uh, through the border to Lwów. And then from Lwów, it goes to places uh, where it reaches um, its destination. So it has to be monitored every time. It is not a safe, uh, safe way for sure, especially uh, it requires a lot of energy from both sides, um, but it happens really smoothly. Uh, so just to tell you what happens on, on Polish side of the border. Uh, so in Warsaw, uh, we created kind of a help center here in Warsaw at the Museum of Modern Arts. Um, we held in the very first week a common room for children uh, fleeing the war. We, for, for I think first three weeks, we were doing about 2000 sandwiches um, a day uh, for people who were just arriving in Warsaw at train stations and train stations then looked like night shelters really. Um, now the situation changed a little bit. I think it calmed down um, though it is said that another wave, refugee wave, uh, is ahead of us. Uh, but definitely, I think the, the needs are changing uh, with the situation changing. Um, so for now, every Saturday, we have a solidarity events happening um, at the museum. We cook, we get to know each other and just coexist. Uh, prepared food goes to reception points, so accommodation um, for refugees at Wołoska Street in Warsaw. Uh, and there is many activities that are just, um, they're answering the needs, the current needs. So basically from Thursday to Saturday uh, at the museum, there is a help center that uh, keeps growing. So just to very briefly tell you also about current needs um, that we really know from the first hands. Um, maybe just to tell you a story to just picture it. Um, our friends, uh, Ukrainian friends, Tatiana, who is working with us in the help committee, um, she told me yesterday uh, that uh, her cousin just left uh, and escaped from suburbs of Kiev, so very close to Bucha. Maybe, I'm sure you heard of it. Uh, she's a nurse. So she said at one point she had to sew, uh, sew um, a pregnant woman with a plastic thread because there was no surgical threads. And needles and threads, surgical ones, they always um, come back on the list of needs. So uh, just, to, just to picture how it looks like. Another story that I heard maybe 10 days ago, um, Mrs. Uh, Kasia, who I know from when I was a child, a friend, um, she's from Ukraine and she just came back to Poland. So she managed to, to come back. Uh, she's been on and off in Poland, but her son and her son-in-law stayed. Also her daughter stayed who had a miscarriage in the very beginning of war. And Kasia told me she was running around hospitals and could not get any anti, um, oh, I don't know the, the, the right pronunciation of the, the, the drug that stops bleeding. Uh, anticoagulant so, maybe something like this. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so these are stories that are just around all the time and um, they're not, they're not legends, they're very um, close to us. So this is something that I heard just um, in past days. The constant challenge I would say is a purchase of equipment for rapid surgery always. So 
uh, these meds and and drugs uh, to to stop bleeding. Uh, just Jeff, uh, as Jeff just said, um, just life saving equipment. So first aid kits, tactical first aid kits, tourniquets uh, that I was talking about last time last month and. Uh, um, some of you might already know how hard it is uh, to get them and also to ship them to Poland because Poland is, uh, is really empty of supplies and, and that's a great problem. So we're really constantly trying to work that out, how to uh, be able to, um, to make bigger shipments and also uh, bigger, bigger deliveries to the other side. Uh, also in the, I'd say, newest list of needs, um, tactical food and medical food came up, uh, as also I heard and we all heard in places of greatest needs, people are just starving. Um, so I will show you maybe a little bit later just a slide with, uh, with, with the current list of needs. Uh, I prepared that slide for you so you could see it. It's, uh, it's both from Czerniowce and from Kiev. Um, and it includes everything I said pretty much, but also it includes just OTC, um, very, very basic medicine like painkillers or um, anti-allergic drugs. Um, but there's also things that are difficult and very expensive to get. And this is, for example, Israeli bandages. Uh, so something that helps really uh, people survive on the battlefield. Um, so maybe also to tell you about uh, our plans and uh, what we are continuously doing and what we feel um, is needed also to extend. Um, we do what we do on bigger scale and that's really thanks also to you and to your great, amazing generosity. Um, we also plan to, thanks to you because we can, we want to make contact with other places. Um, our friend actually is now in Ukraine in very, very dangerous places. He's now in um, Kharkov today. Uh, yesterday, I think, uh, or two days ago, um, he was in other city, um, very dangerous also. So we, have, we hope that we can, through him, also make direct contact with people in greatest need and also in, in, um, uh, with hospitals. Um, accept sending help uh, and equipment. We really want to extend our, our, uh, our actions here uh, for people who escape the, the horror of, of war and come to Poland. For now, there is 2.7 million people uh, that came to Poland and now are refugees, and most of them need help. Um, what I would say, except continuing with Help Center, as I told you, that happens from Thursday to Saturday, um, we, re we really feel that we would like to organize a place where help could be obtained every day, where daily care for children in need could happen. Um, and as our foundation deals with holistic approach to health and we have experience in organizing support groups and also psychological help for people in health crisis, we feel the need to help also this way. So to start psychological help in Ukrainian by opening support groups, working with trauma, working with psychological consult consultations in Ukrainian, we feel that will be in a second, if not is already very, very, very needed. Um, we feel also that um, 
an interdisciplinary meeting and help place is needed where not only refugees but also people in need could find help a place where our regular actions could happen and um, everything that is really related to broadly understood health um, and aid could happen just to tell you from 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 the very very bottom of of what i feel our foundation includes many many types of activities but really they all come down to and boil down to just supporting life and we feel that helping those in need and also answering current needs is the most needed thing um, for now. And we mobilized our resources, really all of them uh, to respond to that humanitarian crisis. And being in constant, constant um, contact with these hospitals and also people on the other side we just feel that we cannot leave these people in need. Um, so all these transports definitely will happen until we have strength and we have resources. Uh, and I hope that it can really um, support, support the good pretty much. Um, I would really like to show you now what we do by just showing you pictures because uh, just talking is uh, doesn't doesn't give that um, that feeling. So, Arena, I also wanted to mention uh, Asha has arrived now to oh, from, 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 from Belgium. So, okay. I, I asked her to to raise her hand so that she would go to the top, and so okay. there she, there she is. So, so Asha, maybe now is the good moment for you to speak. Okay. Hello, hello everybody. And <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> sorry to be a little bit late, but uh, I just arrived from the session. And um, what I want to share is, I, I want to tell you uh, how much we, uh, how much uh, we raised through your uh, support, how much money we raised through your support, and it's. Uh, it's uh, it's very moving uh, the the response of Zen peacemakers and friends of Zen peacemakers and uh, it it came to the to the um, we have like uh, uh, around fifty thousand dollars already which uh, which is really really huge really huge I can see Jeff is impressed <laughs> and. Um, and it's like you know, one transport is uh, when we when we can really equip like fully and with the best stuff what they need like uh, like the Israeli bandages and uh, stuff for sewing uh, wounds and uh, uh, and also the uh, what is the name of it the stasis stasis what is the other name for it tourniquets. Tourniquets, which is like stop bleeding and they they need it really desperately and uh, and we also are, are we we also are sending a lot of food te technical te technical food for 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 soldiers uh, which are around these hospitals because they are really hungry and they are starving uh, so to equip one one shipment, we need like around ten thousand dollars. So with this amount, we can really we can really do a lot. And um, it's it's very moving how how they respond and how grateful they are and how how supported they feel. And Orina mentioned it already, but uh, because we we expand thanks to thanks to uh, to uh, to peacemakers. Uh, uh, they could expand as well, uh, so they uh, expand the chain of distribution to uh, to, uh, to 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 more more places where are maybe more dangerous places and in in greater need. 
um, and uh, so we are we are really very very happy and uh, and uh, personally I also believe that supporting this uh, uh, this mission is to support the, the the peace in the whole world and it's like uh, even on the energy level it's important to to hold this in our hearts and in our minds uh, uh, the ukrainians and um, really it's like i have a deep feeling uh, that it's it's about all of us it's maybe you know like uh, like i'm in belgium now and uh, they don't feel it here the, it's it's very far away although they also want to help and they want they wanted to know more and to find out because uh, mm, there there are flags here they 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 support how they can but you cannot feel it like uh, like in the country which is like on the on the same border with ukrainian so it's um it's, this is uh, this is from us. So now we want to concentrate. Thanks to this uh, amazing money, we want to really send them the best stuff they can get uh, to save lives. And I don't know if you told already the story or or not. I don't know which one, but uh, but sometimes maybe I can add that sometimes we also um, buy for ind individuals. Yeah. Uh, things that are most needed so for example our friend uh, Taras who is also in our help committee uh, he is um, he's just um, he opened and runs Bliskist collective so this Polish Ukrainian collective so uh, we we bought uh, decided to buy bulletproof vest for his dad who is uh, pretty much there uh, and in in defense forces of Ukraine we also bought He's dead, uh, this thermal visual camera and send it over. So things that are most needed also to Kasia, to Mrs. Kasia that I mentioned, she told, she, she told me a story of her, of her um, um, daughter and miscarriage of her daughter. So her son and her son-in-law stayed and also were, had to join uh, defense forces. So we also bought these two bulletproof vests for them because uh, this is heartbreaking, but what they say, uh, they have to equip themselves. So um, everyone, so what, what Mrs. Kasia told me, um, her son, who was uh, pretty much uh, defending the ter territory, he was just walking around naked, so to say. Um, so this is what we can do. We also uh, next week are buying um, we wheelchair for our friend's uh, grandpa. And also we're helping uh, her to uh, get her family uh, over to Poland. So, uh, so these are also needs that we feel that we have to respond to. Uh, we can't do it on, on much bigger scale because for example, one bulletproof uh, vest costs around $1,500. So this is, uh, and they, 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 need, they need it all. Uh, but what we can do, we can, we can definitely help individuals uh, that are very close to us and around us. And we can help on bigger scale with uh, tactical tourniquets Asha told, uh, told about and all these things that uh, are really uh, life-saving things. And they also cost, um, for example, one tourniquet uh, Ron knows because we have been in touch uh, since, but and and also Ron knows how difficult it is to uh, to get them and deliver them to Poland. But um, but one costs about forty dollars, if I'm right, forty to fifty dollars. Uh, the same with Israeli bandages; uh, they cost about forty fifty dollars each. Um, so these are the costs, uh, except of course uh, bandages and. Um, all these uh, surge, like uh, equipment for quick surgery, uh, we can we can get them for um, for cheaper and also for bigger scale that we do. So uh, let me show you pictures, and I will keep uh, also uh, telling you who who we are uh, on both sides. Um, and uh, did you mention that we, we, we got today the, the very beautiful 
thanks letter from uh, one of the hospitals. Not yet, but uh, I will show you a second. Uh, do you see my screen? Is yeah. Yes. So to start uh, packing in Warsaw. Um, Oh, maybe this is this is better. So uh, this is a letter. Actually, this is a letter that uh, I think we received today. It's in Ukrainian, so I can't. I will. I or Mia or Asha will translate it uh, because it translated also to Polish. Um, this is a letter also from the commander that uh, is assigned for our foundation. Uh, from Czerniowce uh, that um, specifically asks for specific things. Uh, so this is how it looks like. And we operate uh, basing on this letter, on these letters. Uh, and we all always have this letter, also letter from, uh, from other organization or other hospital. And then we prepare the list of needs that I will show you in a second. And with all these documents, we can cross the border. So this is, um, all always it is updated and always um, uh, it, it just helps us and lets us be very transparent. Uh, yeah, this is sorry for, for how it looks like, but uh, this is translated letter that we actually got today and it was uh, extremely, extremely moving. Um, uh, I haven't, I didn't have time to, um, I'm so sorry to translate it to uh, English, but uh, we will, we will try to translate it for you now. So it says the hospital of Czerniowce um, is extremely grateful for all the humanitarian uh, aid and help um, delivered with by meds and all the um, medical equipment uh, for saving lives of defense forces of Ukraine um, when this invasion of Ukraine uh, by uh, Russia happened. Your help is, is very up to date with all the needs. Giving the, the help, um, you don't only give material help, but you also give joy and um, hope. We wish and we hope that your goodness and your generosity will come back to you and we wish you all the best and all the warmth in your lives and we really hope for our cooperation and future uh, hope continues and this is from the commander from um, from Czerniowce. So that was delivered to us today and it's always very touching and moving um, to and we're very also grateful uh, I wrote Juliana today that uh, we're very grateful that also they found time to write such a beautiful letter that that gives us also more energy to keep going um, this is uh, a new place uh, that we have uh, where we are sorting and packing things. It's in the center of, of Warsaw. And this is how it looks like usually on, on Tuesdays. Um, this is first aid kits that we, uh, that we managed to, to get. Uh, also painkillers and other things packed. Uh, this is what we bought that was uh, I don't know how it's, uh, what's the name in English but it's a uh, yeah it's for throat uh, it's it's a sur surgery uh, equ equipment uh, according to list of needs this is us uh, waiting to send the the shipment uh, this is our uh, amazing driver who was driving, but uh, is not anymore, but he helped us for, I don't know, a few drives and he was driving right into all these places. So he was going straight from Warsaw to Ukrainian cities um, and delivering. This is again our place. This is Krzysiek. 
and Asha. Uh, these are the tactical tourniquets, um, the very needed. This is our friend. Uh, yeah, gloves. <laughs> we always, um, always uh, count um, everything. So everything is, is really, uh, I feel very well prepared and organized. We try to do it the best we can. Uh, this is a letter from, I have it in English also. This is a letter also assigned to our foundation from the charity organization that I told you about that works with children and is responsible for delivering to other places in greatest needs. So, um, they, they name specific uh, list of needs. Again, uh, this is a letter in Polish from the commander. This is uh, Israeli bandages. This is how they look like. And food also, medical food. I'm showing you this because it, it, has, a, it has an ending to it on the other side uh, that is very touching always. Uh, to compare pictures. This is Reshek, uh, Krzysiek's son, who is a helper. Uh, and just last transport, it was Wednesday, he was drawing, um, and actually every box had a name Resho on it. So, <laughs> and also a heart and a flower. Uh, this is how it looks like uh, at the end. This is one. That went to Tarnopol, another city. Um, this is uh, how it looks like, um, the shipment. And usually we send three of them at once. This is the picture. And this is the, also the list of, uh, for, for crossing the border and also uh, what we're sending. So we always, prepare it in Polish and also Ukrainian. We have um, a U Ukrainian friend who is helping us with the translation and volunteer to, to help with all, all transports. Uh, this, is, this is a new transport. Uh, so uh, because it became too dangerous for Marcin, uh, the amazing brave man who was helping us for first weeks. Um, he decided uh, to stop uh, the transports himself, but fortunately uh, we came together with another group that, um, and we're working closely now with another group uh, that really supports people and sent transports to bring people back to Poland. So these transports, these buses go empty to Ukrainian side to Lvov and goes back full of people, uh, so refugees. So what we do now, we are packing, this is our transport. So we are packing things and sending, and this is, um, this is uh, delivered to Lvov, got and is, uh, is always taken by Czerniowce and by Kiev and comes, comes back with people. So we also feel that uh, this is, uh, amazing cooperation and we feel um, we feel very very happy and close that we can support that mission also of helping people fleeing the war so I think that's that's from from uh, from our side and I would like to show you also uh, what happens on the other side so of the newest pictures this is uh, still with Martin. One of the volunteers that I told you about, um, who, are, who we are in constant contact with. Uh, this is how it looks like when it's uh, maybe I showed you this picture already, but this is how it looks like when they when they um, when the uh, shipment is delivered and we get a photo that it is delivered with our list of needs. This is very touching for me always. 
So uh, this is a commander from Chernyovce and also uh, it's in Ukraine with uh, uh, our driver. Sure. Mm -hmm. This is the picture that was uh, made by Ryszek a few days ago. And yesterday we, we received a confirmation that is already, it is already in Ukraine and it is delivered this time to Mariupol, to city that is in greatest needs. And everything that we know from Mariupol really breaks hearts. So we're very moved and very happy that we can help also, and we are able to send help over there. So uh, we know that this piece of art uh, was uh, traveling uh, through Oh, this is Marcin. I will show you in a second because um, there is more because everybody did a picture with this piece of art. <laughs> um, this is in one of the hospitals. This is also an equipment that I showed you that we bought. These are the tourniquets also delivered on the other side. This is um, in the hospital in uh, Czerniowca. Uh, this is the medical, uh, also food uh, and uh, tactical food that I showed you that we bought. And it's on the other side. This is newest. It's just yesterday we received these pictures. This goes to Mariupol. It, said, it says Mariupol. And the piece of art. <laughs> And this is also today I want to show you that that was posted on Instagram. You can uh, you can read because it's in English. It's from it's from our volunteer friends um, Juliana from uh, Armed Forces uh, Defense Forces of Ukraine. So this is really always very, very touching and moving for us to receive confirmation and receive pictures from the other side. Um, and you can see, or I can see at least by faces on these pictures, um, I mean, everything, you can see everything. Um, I would like to also show you just a few things from our help center uh, in Warsaw. Um, there is one movie or no, a few movies, one movie very special uh, that I will make a very short introduction to uh, because it happens um, that we, we started to meet in a very broad, um, how do you say, uh, uh, oh, I don't find the, the right word. But some magic happens, and I'll show you in a second. And I'm sure I can I can share it. Uh, this is a dumplings, Ukrainian dumplings. And that happens on Saturdays, and then it's delivered to the reception points where people get the This is, this is how it happened, how it looks like at the museum now. And uh, yeah, I, I think I'll, now I'll show you this special moment, at least for me. The boy in the, the boy in the movie, um, he's, a, he's an orphan, uh, a refugee.
So I, I just wanted to share that with you because I feel that among that horror, some also magic happens sometimes. Um, I think that's, that's all of pictures and movies that I uh, prepared for you. There is also a list of needs that I would like to uh, show you. Um, I can also send it later to Jeff. So, uh, so it's, this, is, this is very updated. Um, it's also possible to, I don't know, share screen or uh, screenshot. Um, but this is something that, uh, that we were updating yesterday. How so do you I, print that? Sorry? How can we print that? Uh, what I can do, I can, I can send it uh by email so um so you have it as a pdf file yes okay i will do that uh so i i i feel that maybe this is this is all from me krzysiek do you want to say something no <laughs> asha i want to say something um something a little um just uh, through this situation, uh, I can really experience very strongly how important is the work the Zen peacemakers are doing uh, with the older retreats. And uh, it, it's amazing how, how, it, uh, how it works. I, I usually attend the Auschwitz retreat, but I, I, I never expect uh, how, how strongly resonates will resonate this practice in my life. And it's like, uh, I think it's, it's, it's so important what this organization does, uh, you know, holding, holding, uh, holding the peace energy in the world. And uh, of course, by, by supporting situations like this, uh, uh, which we are having now, but also by, by preventing, uh, by by the retreats we are uh, we are uh, we are uh, able to to attend through the Zen peacemakers. This this is I, I I think about it you know every day how how this experience now I can transform into this action, really healing and loving action. Thank you. Thank so you, Asha. And, uh, maybe you have some questions uh, you want to ask. Uh, and and just before we do, if I could, um, uh, Hoden uh, took a screenshot of the list of needs, and it's in the chat. And he put it in the chat such that you just tap it and you can download. And uh, Orina, perhaps also maybe if you put up the other the other slide with the uh, the PayPal address, uh, Hoden can do the same thing that way, then everybody can download this and... Of course, of course. Perhaps where to ship? Uh, so I have to sc uh, share screen again. I think so, yeah. Um, and then uh, Hoden will capture that and then he can have it be downloadable. Yes, this one, this one, yes. Got it, Hoden. Thank you. Well, um, everyone, we uh, thank you so much, Orina and Asha. And, uh, and I did want to uh, acknowledge Andre has uh, joined a while ago, too. So uh, welcome, Andre. Um, and uh, that last image is, is available in chat now. So I think you can just go there and click that and download. So you'll have the, uh, the, the address for PayPal. And I can, I can promise you that it works. <laughs> We've tested it. So where, do you, where, um, does one, where does one ship the supplies? Corina, do you want to, is, is there an address we can share? 
um, where to ah uh, where to ship uh, the supplies? Of course, of from course. America. Uh, you can do it. What we what we do? Uh, if someone sends uh, any packages, uh, we cooperate with the Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw. So I will post. I will put it just now here, uh, and it's from Monday to Friday as usual. Every someone is always there to uh, to to just receive. So I the will. The reason the reason I ask is that. Um... My son's in the military. He's been in for 17 years. And we've been sending boxes to him all over the world through APO addresses. Um, that's not to say that you have an APO address. But um, if, 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 if our hospital or our church, et cetera, want to pack boxes and send those supplies, we need to know how to do it. Yeah, she's uh, she'll post the address for the museum in Warsaw. Okay, and you can and you can, and now this won't be a downloadable file, so you'll need to go into the chat, and copy and paste it into some other document. So, um, so we have uh, we have a little bit of time here, um, as we like. Uh, if if uh, there are questions, comments, anything anyone wishes to share, um, please. Uh, um, I can't see everybody because we're on two screens, so this may not work if you wave your hand. But if you go under uh, in your Zoom reactions, you can find uh, raise hand and uh, you raise your electronic hand. And hi, Marcia, please go ahead and unmute. Thank you so much for. Yes. Um, can you hear me? Very well. OK, beautiful. Um, it's, it's beautiful to be here with you. I send so much love and thanks and um, uh, will support your work and continue to support your work in any way that I can. Um, I was wanting to know, I spoke to a friend in Warsaw. Um, I don't know if she got in touch with you and it's about the mental health needs and it's about um, she and her husband doing work with PTSD. And her name is um, Gabi von Seltmann, and she was part of Zen Peacemakers um, and the Auschwitz retreat at some point. And um, I told her about your being at the museum. So uh, I, will, I, will, I will send a message to her again that you're evolving into this mental health support work. Please. And um, perhaps she will reach you. Yes, please, please, because uh, uh, definitely um, practitioners are needed. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. All my love to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, you Marshall. Uh, anyone else have a question or a comment? Yeah, can you hear me, Jeff? Uh, yes, Ron, I hear you very well. Thank you. Okay, I lost everything for a minute. Um, is there a way we can kind of coordinate the U.S. effort? Um, I'm, you know, finding discounted tourniquets and Israeli bandages through North American Rescue, shipping issues, trying to get the best rates for shipping, to kind of share information out of the U.S., specifically the U.S. Um, I can send an email to you, Jeff, in outlining what I've discovered in terms of... Uh, in uh, Polish shipments and so that we're not spending a lot of money because we found I found discounts on the tourniquets um, substantial $22 for those tourniquets at North American Rescue I just mentioned that now but they're running they're running out they had they don't have any black the tourniquets but they have the blue and orange and you know they have a lot of stuff but if you tell them it's humanitarian aid you get a discount Mm. Yeah, Ron. I think uh, I think you have a good idea, and, and 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 having a consolidated effort versus disparate like well efforts doing, yeah. is is wise. What I would suggest, Ron, is if you if you'd like to share your email address in the chat, and sure. then anyone else here on the screen. I imagine we have some expertise 
in logistics and international shipping yeah. and dealing with customs, dealing with customs and governments and all of that stuff. And perhaps if you put your uh, email address in there, anyone else who might be interested or or might have something to offer expertise wise can copy your address and then I just put that in. I think I spelled everything right. Have to have an off yeah. an offline conversation. Right. Thank you for that. That's wonderful thinking. Thank you. Anyone else here have a, your physical hand or your electronic hand? I'll try to look around for for hands. <laughs> ah, Doreen, hi. Thank you. Uh, you'll need to uh, unmute yourself there. There you go. Oh, you're still muted. There you go. Hmm. For some reason, we're not hearing you, Doreen. I'm not quite sure why. <clears throat> uh, Irene, go ahead. Irene? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, Magosia was my beloved Dharma sister for many, many years, and Andre is my beloved Dharma brother. And I, I'm so moved. I'm so. Uh, proud of you, Orina, and the whole team of what you're doing together. It's such an example of um, what our practice really is about. So it's, I just wanted to say that. And also, we, uh, I sent an email to all the people in my Sangha, and we raised more than 16,000 euro already. So I, I, I'm collecting it in the Netherlands, so you don't get all these bank um, administration stuff and we continue with this and also just for your information in the Netherlands there's an organization that's called Pastors for Ukraine and I joined them and to see what kind of either I'm a therapist also but either psychological or you know trauma therapy or spiritual help we can do and maybe that's so in other countries also but just wanted to to share that and to know that you know, you may feel that uh, countries that are not so close to Ukraine don't feel the effects, but we are, I feel we're very um, uh, bonded and very um, um, committed to, to, to see what we can do to support your work, but also, you know, for the well-being of people that are going through these awful times. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kagetsu. That's that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Uh, I I want to note for everyone. Ron has put his email address into the chat. So if you're interested in in if you're in the U.S. and you're interested in talking with Ron about coordinating and consolidating logistics for donations, you can you can uh, capture his email address there. Uh, we have some time here. If if uh, there are other questions or comments, Doreen, did you have a question or comment? We're not getting any audio. Sorry. Yeah. You could, sorry about that. Uh, you could add something to the chat, and we can relay that. We yeah we we can read your chat. Uh, per perhaps while we're waiting, uh, Arena, I have a question. Um, you know, you've referred to that, you know, driving the supplies into Ukraine is obviously dangerous. Uh, have there been incidents where, where you have been interrupted or detained or harassed or anything, or has it been fairly safe so far? No, fortunately we haven't. Uh, but we are delivering to places uh, safe. So for now, it's Lvov. And from Lvov, it's taken by uh, first Ukrainian police from Ternyovce, and I believe they know the ways. And also from another volunteer who uh, coordinates also um, delivery, and also he gets from us from Lvov, and then he delivers to these very dangerous places. But uh, the knowledge of volunteers and also, as I believe, just cooperating with people who are highly 
involved in structures uh, lets us really um, really continue with safe transport because we have heard and some people asked me before uh, are we sure that the deliveries are not being even robbed because that happens also and fortunately uh, for us it never happened but I believe that you know this really um, amazing magic happened at the beginning that we were contacted by um, by the uh, defense forces so uh, these are very very transparent structures and also um, this net now of cooperation with people really open-hearted and very very involved uh, really lets us uh, continue with it. It became more difficult with having so many stops on the way because uh, obviously there's now three to four stops before it reaches uh, the hospital. Uh, but, you know, everybody has their own uh, telephone numbers. Everybody is in contact. So we are constantly in this net of um, you know, of communication. So um, it really sometimes you don't know the people, but you feel you know them already. Yeah. Thank you, Orina. Uh, my friend Kathleen Hoetsu, you have your hand up if you'd like to unmute. Thank you. I've seen that you were before me, Marsha. Would you go first? Or I think you had your hand up before, but okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I just wanted to, of course, thank you also for what you shared. Uh, and I um, also want to support your decisions in, as you, as you told us, that you also buy supplies for helpers to make them safe for these bulletproof vests for friends and for those who help. So the, the self-care is so crucial and I, and I very much um, yeah, give my support to you that you take good care of yourself and, and those people who help you. And I wish you good strength for yeah, carrying this through. And it also touched me what you said, Aisha, because um, I have to say, uh, being further away in Germany from the situation, but I also felt that the practice of bearing witness uh, that we shared at, at Auschwitz, uh, Birkenau and other places is so such a good soul food for for the situation. And, and when you told that before, I was, yeah, I, I very much agreed inside of me. And I'm really wondering how the next uh, retreat in Auschwitz will look like, yeah. containing this, what is happening right now. And uh, I'm, I'm really proud and happy to, to be able to support a bit in coordinating the Peacemaker donations in Germany, so we, at least we had a little contribution to, to give. And now we have your list of, of supplies. As I got that, it's really difficult to get them in Poland itself, so we, we might as well be able to send stuff to, over to you. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. <laughs> thank you. And uh, Marcia, uh, you do have your hand up. Did you have something here? Uh, and I'm sorry, I, I overlooked you before. It's okay. I was a repeat, <laughs> and um, my 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 repeat is um, following up on um, Kathleen's um, question also, and Ron's offer. Is it is it better to coordinate with Ron, for example, in the United States, and and give donation for purchasing more material that is then sent over to you or is it better to send you money and you choose how it is used uh that's good. that's my first question i have a second one <laughs> Jeff. i think i think both actually because uh money obviously helps us uh respond to updated lists because uh we get them week by week so we can buy things that are updated. Uh, the shipment from, especially from United States, it takes long. And even from, from neighboring Germany, it takes long. So money is always 
uh, really, really important. But also uh, just getting um, already things that are hard to get in Poland is also very helpful for us uh, because it takes so much time also to be looking through Poland that is so empty. So I would say both are very, very helpful. And, um, and I think uh, if Ron offered himself as, uh, as a coordinator on, on uh, US side, that would be probably a much of help for us also um, to get bigger things uh, instead of smaller uh, amounts. That's uh, my suggestion, but you know, any, any, pretty much anything that works is very helpful. Okay, wonderful. That's a wonderful, beautiful clarification. Yes, yes. Thank you. And um, the other mention that's on my heart is that, um, you know, you mentioned Mariupol, and we are talking about how things are gotten to places. And I know here in New York City, it's like, and on Facebook, we're all like so connected every day about what's happening. And um, how can people even get into Mariupol? I mean, it, it seems like Mariupol has been flattened and decimated and, and you know, and, and be bearing witness every day to the New York Times, to Facebook that's put up, I feel very close to it. I feel very committed. And I really have those questions of the destruction that people are facing and how everyone is facing that. I think it takes huge bravery to, yeah. uh, to be going to places that are um, pretty much a, a picture of destruction and, and of such um, cruelty and as well as such um, pain yeah. but there are still people who also there's there's people who still are uh, defending Mariupol this is small groups but but they keep trying thank you thank you uh, for your question and comment Marcia uh, or Orina, uh, if, if I may, and I, I feel a little shaky uh, uh, trying to repeat something that you said. We spoke the other day, uh, a few days ago, and uh, I asked you what else we could do to help. And, I, and, I, and I, I made the comment that, you know, among the Zen Peacemaker community, we have a lot of counselors and therapists and people involved in, in talk therapy and mental health and so forth. And, and, and perhaps this might be helpful at some point. And your answer was so wise, I really appreciated it, and I've already repeated it to a couple of other groups of people. Um, and and what, what Arena said was, um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but that they're, they're sort of looking at their help for their refugees in three, three tiers or three levels. The first one really is basic food, clothing and and temporary safety shelter the second one is perhaps longer term housing but also legal status so that people have the opportunity to be stable and and legal and not and not be fearful in that regard and then third is mental health and it reminds me of maslow a little bit uh, if i remember from 50 years ago um, and it made just so much sense. Arena, did I get that? Was I close? <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. But this is this is exactly what I feel it ha happens here. So the first three weeks were pretty much about the very basic needs, and still they are needed greatly uh, to support people who still come. I think uh, it's very obvious that the wave, the first wave, calmed down a little bit, though it is said that the next wave is coming. But um, that helps us see now through this very current help 
some perspectives of what will be needed because it's uh, it's dealing with trauma uh, on many many levels and also i i can see for myself i can feel that uh, poland is changing and transforming through it very very much and i i believe that only keeping this helping action and keeping the the heart perspective will help us um, go through it and maybe also learn and also discover and just experience something that is very healing so um i believe only continuing with uh helping on current current level that's one thing and also seeing through it in longer perspective that uh we definitely start to do now with psychological help and also creating a space that will be um, available for people every day because uh, there are some places um, and I see Meg also is here who came uh, to Poland um, so she knows of places also already uh, volunteering places uh, where people stay and try to organize themselves. There is a lot of places in, in Warsaw that provide and try to provide help. Though some are uh, on daily basis, some are only a few days a week. What we feel definitely from our experience from, from, from a few, few years of having a uh, foundation and uh, of our experience, we feel that what, what we can also give um yeah. thank you um we just have a few more minutes uh if if anyone has another question or or a comment something to share i i know it's probably dinner in warsaw so and, and we have a, a number of people from europe here so uh we want to be mindful and respectful yeah. of your time sorry Go ahead, Meg. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'd like to echo what Arena said. I've spent most of my time here, honestly, in kindergartens. Um, great place for me to practice my language skill because we speak at about the same level. Um, but I guess what I would say is it's really clear how, how deep the impact of this trauma is for a one-year-old, a two-year-old, a child that's pre-verbal, you know, they don't understand, they don't, they, all they know how to do is feel that in their body and then, then burst it out somehow. Um, so I really would echo the, the need for people who know how to work with that type of trauma, especially in little, little ones um, who, you know, their moms are frustrated. The whole, the whole thing is frustrated because it's just so difficult. Um, and I'm really good at rolling around on the floor with them, but I'm not a psychotherapist. Maybe I am. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks, Mioha. Asha, you have your hand up too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to. I, I just want to say because <clears throat> uh, uh, it, it it is very important aspect. Uh, um, for for us that uh, that this the support we are getting from zen peacemakers uh it's amazing of course as a donations and so on but it's also very encouraging and supporting for us to carry on like you really give us courage and you really give us we can feel the energy and connection and it's really very very moving uh, and uh, we just can carry on. You know, it gives us uh, enormous support. We don't feel like this lonely bird trying to extinguish the fire of the forest. We are, you know, all together. And it's it's wonderful. It's really wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Asha. Any other comments here? I, uh, I see your hand, uh, Crystal. Yeah, Go ahead. yeah, thank you. Uh, I want to thank uh, 
all Zen peacemakers for support for the for the money and also from the uh, free uh, free tenants. And now I uh, really uh, feel them. I I have been in Auschwitz, but uh, now it's the time I I feel uh, what it's about. Uh, not knowing, uh, bearing witness, and and uh, taking actions. Uh, so thank you uh, very much. Hodge, Risho, come, 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 come. It's my <laughs> son, Risho. Our, uh, it's uh, uh, the youngest Zen peacemaker from Poland. Our helper, uh, those hearts and flowers were from him. Ah. Say hello. 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 <laughs> Thank and, you. Uh, I want to uh, I want to tell to Marsha that I know Gabi and I al already uh, text her on uh, on on uh, Messenger uh, and I'm I'm, I'm going to contact her. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Let's see uh Gerardo, I I see your hand up. If you'd like to I'm, unmute. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Very well, thank you. Hi, hi, Arena. I'm I'm curious if you um, could explain what the the housing situation is like right now for displaced people, uh, specifically in Warsaw, um, and if you know anyone who's helping them transition from uh, Poland to other places in Europe. Um, I ask because I'm very much involved here in Spain with people settling and navigating the system of of um, you know, just paperwork and visas and everything. So I'd love to know if, you know, if you know anyone in that space in Warsaw or in Krakow. Uh, do you mean there's places that you uh, know of that could uh, help and uh, receive people in Spain? Yes, that I know people on this end, but I don't know anyone in, in Poland who's kind of making that link. Uh... I'm, I'm very happy to connect you to people who are um, working mostly around uh, that subject. So helping because what we know and what we get, uh, you know, a lot of information comes through us. So a lot of people took people home. So, uh, you know, my, my brother has people home and uh, many, many friends have people home. So, um, with a flood, I feel that with a flood, uh, the first flood of uh, refugees that was so happened in one moment, it was so difficult. Now it feels that it calmed down a little bit. So it's not so urgent anymore. Also, there is, uh, I know that there is uh, places taken over by the state and by uh, Warsaw. Uh, so there's uh, accommodations that are being prepared. Uh, but I'm very happy to connect you to people who are uh, who know more of that, um, and also you know because that traffic happens all the time. Actually, I I, uh, I forgot to to tell you because there was another uh, very moving story that we had. So we were helping uh, to transport. We we got a phone call one one evening from it happened after our Zoom. So from a lady that uh, knew that from Kharkov, from city of Kharkov, there was about 100 of children being uh, rescued and they were disabled children. Uh, and some of them were uh, orphans. So that was a huge operation. Uh, we managed to help some of them. Uh, and also we spread, of course, work through, you know, uh, between us and our friends. But uh, I know that some of uh, some of people already found places and have places for three months. But there was uh, there was a lady that uh, I spoke. Actually, Andre gave me a sign uh, at the day that there is an available. The whole ho house was available, and we managed to place uh, some of the children with uh, with some of um, adults with them there. And already then helped them with documents and everything so that happens constantly but as we are involved mostly with medical and with uh, organizing ourselves here uh, i feel we are more uh, sort of a passage uh, of information with accommodating people that, that's only my experience 
but I know closely people who, um, you know, who work uh, in this field. So uh, happy to happy to share uh, contacts. Great, appreciate it. Sure. Thank you for a great question. That's a great question. We might have time for one more question or comment uh, before we have to close. If anyone has anything to share, thank you so much for a rich uh, conversation here. Okay. Okay, everyone, thank you so much. Thank you for giving us your time and your energy and your support and your love. Um, it, uh, I know how much it means to uh, Orina and Asha and Christoph and everybody, uh, Andre, everybody doing this work. So we appreciate you. We appreciate your attention and your, and your uh, awareness. Thank you so much. Stay safe.